The Safe Moon cryptocurrency has had a roller coaster of a year so far, and it's only been out for a year. The token has garnered a devoted user base since its launch in 2021, but a lot of the supporters have now turned into skeptics. Let's dive right in. Welcome back to Ultralight. My name is Wes Sherwin. Safe Moon was founded by John Caroni, a former analyst with the United States Department of Defense. Caroni created Safe Moon as an ability to store value and to resist against market volatility. When version one launched, it was very popular and skyrocketed in value in the beginning days. Many influencers, celebrities, creators promoted the token, which we'll get into later, and the token saw exponential gains. SafeMoon V1 was audited by Certic and received a security score of 86, but the team over at HashX decided that they were going to do their own audit, and their findings showed that the first version of SafeMoon had some critical red flags that needed to be addressed. Some of the most important issues found were temporary ownership renounce. This was marked as critical severity. If the lock function was once called, already renounced ownership can be returned to the owner by calling the unlock function. This can mislead users who will check that the owner of the contract is zero address and will think that the ownership is actually renounced. We identify this behavior as fraudulent and strongly recommend locking for the maximum possible amount of time immediately after. Number two, no safeguards for fees and max TX amount. This is also marked as critical severity. SafeMoon's V1 contract contains external only owner functions. This behavior is dangerous, as at the time of the audit, the contract owner is an EOA, or externally owned account. And if it is compromised or the owner acts maliciously, it can lead to devastating consequences for the token, making it completely unusable. This can be mitigated by locking the ownership for the maximum possible amount of time. The goal of SafeMoon V2 was to fix many of these issues and provide better security, reliability, and value for its holders. SafeMoon V2 launched in December of 2021. Now, while support for the old SafeMoon has been withdrawn, the token still exists on exchanges. So if holders want to, they can keep the first version of SafeMoon and the second version of SafeMoon in their wallets. Now, when version two of SafeMoon was created, there was no automatic swap from V1 to V2. Holders had to consolidate their own tokens into the new version. John Caroni, the founder of SafeMoon, has made some pretty strong claims for what the token can do and what the company is working on. Let's check out their site. The SafeMoon Protocol V2 is a community-driven focused DeFi token that forms part of an expanding SafeMoon ecosystem. Four simple functions occur during each trade. 4% is redistributed to all existing holders, 3% is added to liquidity, 2% of tokens are burned, and 1% is added to the SafeMoon ecosystem growth fund. So what this means is that every time you buy or sell SafeMoon V2, there is a 10% tax or transaction fee, and 1% of that goes back to the developer, or as they worded it, is added to the SafeMoon ecosystem growth fund. But that really just means it's going back to the developer wallet. As well, the site says that 2% of tokens are burned. But if you go to a really valuable resource called tokensniffer.com that breaks down these contracts and gives you a user experience where you can understand and read between the lines of the data built into the smart contracts, you'll find that less than 1% has actually been burned so far. See for yourself. You'll see the prerequisite for at least 95% of liquidity burned and locked is less than 0.01% stating that not enough liquidity is locked or burned, which could allow for significant amounts to be removed, rug pull. One of the really good signs of a project is that an owner or creator wallet contains less than 5% of circulating token supply. While the owner wallet for SafeMoon contains 15.63% of the circulating token supply. When this happens, it could have a large impact on the token price if sold. As well, another huge flag is that the source code contains a proxy contract, which could potentially allow the functionality to be changed. This is the exact same issue that was found with the first version of the SafeMoon token. I'm not getting paid to say any of this, and this is not financial advice. I am just a guy who creates content and talks about stuff that I like and is trying to build a business out of it. Cool. Let's keep going. Just like version one of the SafeMoon token, the contract contains ownership functionality and ownership is not renounced, which may allow the creator or current owner to modify contract behavior. For example, disable selling, change fees, or mint new tokens. There can be legitimate reasons for not renouncing ownership. Check with the project team for such information. You can also go to another amazing resource called staysafeu.org and check and see what liquidity is locked or unlocked. 
if you put in the V2 Safe Moon contract within the site, you see that 100% of the pancake swap liquidity is unlocked. It shows the 10% buy and sell fees that we discussed earlier. 100% of liquidity is unlocked on the primary exchange that this token is traded on, and that is PancakeSwap. If they wanted to pull the rug out from under you, they can. And another way that they can do this is by what SafeMoon calls their secret sauce, better known as automatic liquidity. And real quick, if you rock with the content, please hit that like button down below. You know it helps the boy out. So automatic liquidity is just when someone comes in to swap a token, make a transaction, buy, sell, even connect a wallet and a certain percentage of tokens are taken out automatically of that user's wallet and put into a standalone liquidity pool that no one has access to, or at least no one is supposed to have access to. You see, if these automatic liquidity pools are set up the right way, they're supposed to be untouchable. And through the resources that I showed you earlier, whether that's Token Sniffer, Stay Safe You, well, all of those resources show that none of the liquidity is locked. So the developer, owner, founder has ownership of that pool. And at any point in time that they want to, can pull the funds from it, drain the value of the token, and ruin your investments. And the other aspect of automatic liquidity is that it means that no one can actually liquidate until they get enough people to buy the token and inflate the price. This is a recipe for a rug pull and is almost the definition of a Ponzi scheme. You sell a service, but the more people you get to sell that service, the more money you make. But the difference about this one is that you don't even get to really make any money money. You don't get to liquidate any of your funds until you get enough people to buy the token and get it set at a certain price. That's a huge issue. If you're watching this video and you feel lost, the main idea is that SafeMoon charges fees to discourage selling and encourages their buyers to hold on to their tokens and watch their balances grow. That's the pitch behind SafeMoon's V2 contract. Let's go back to the SafeMoon website for just a second. All right, so we're on the homepage and we see in there about us, we are now addressing the second part of our mission, the expansion and channeling of our technology to propel new innovations for good and a venture philanthropy model to advance those innovations to every part of the world. And one of those innovations is something called Operation Phoenix. This is one of the primary programs that SafeMoon is funding. The project is described as a new, more efficient kind of wind turbine which the organization plans to use in Africa. John Caroni was seen at the South by Southwest Festival in Austin, Texas last week, talking about Operation Phoenix. Here's a quick clip. At least for safe and the way we measure return on impact is, one, does it actually change lives? And two, are we making enough revenue from it that we can continue to build out the system? Now, turbines are easy to, to, to calculate. How many turbines have we actually put into the ground? How many more do we have in the wing? And how much energy is it producing? So for us, that's, it's a lot easier to measure that metric. So you heard John just say, does it impact lives? Which is a valuable question. But the second thing he said is even more interesting. Are we making enough revenue from it to build out the system? Well, the Safe Moon community on Reddit had a lot to say about this. Must be liberating for JK or John Caroni. Imagine if the CEO of all your investments took the stance that I don't care about my company's valuation as long as I have funding for every 32 hoot wind turbine Gambia Phoenix project that I can dream up. Seems like a dangerous business model to disregard the returns of those that support your project, business, or corporation. I understand the fanboys will be upset by this. It's hard to unhear the man's words that contradict business 101 practices. Someone else said, my life is definitely changed through the loss of my investment's value. That's for sure. And the last thing I want to talk about is the class action lawsuit that was filed on February 17th, 2022 against SafeMoon and celebrity influencers and athletes. The lawsuit filed against SafeMoon was made in California, and the case argues that SafeMoon lured people into investing in the token by taking part in misleading promotions. It accuses the then SafeMoon COO, Jack Haynes Davies, of recruiting celebrities and paying them to endorse the SafeMoon crypto, thus inflating its price. It also argues that the stalled attempt to launch the SafeMoon wallet led to the price falling. As you can see, the lawsuit names Braden John Caroni, Jack Haynes Davies, Ryan Oriaga, who is SafeMoon's global head of products, former company representative Sean Wittrial, as well as celebrity endorsers that include YouTuber Jake Paul, Backstreet Boys Nick Carter, YouTuber Ben Phillips, and rappers Soldier Boy and Lil Yachty. 
And so if we're talking about the innovation and validity behind the token and the company SafeMoon, why would you allocate the budget to pay celebrities and influencers to promote your coin? Instead, that money should be allocated towards research and development, thus grounding your company and token in credibility and maintaining your integrity. Instead, they decided to hire Soldier Boy to promote their coin. Because as we all know, we can trust Soldier Boy with anything. He's never tried to sell us anything ridiculous ever. Y'all remember the Game Boy that Soldier Boy made? I would love to know how many people own that. If you own one of the Soldier Boy Game Boy things, please drop a comment down below. I want to know. And obviously that lawsuit is still happening. So we're gonna wait to see what the final outcome is. So only you can decide if investing in SafeMoon is a risk that you can afford to take. If it is, it's your money and you can do with it what you want. The purpose of this video is to not hate on the Safe Moon army. I don't have any beef with y'all. And I believe that you believe that Safe Moon has real potential. And I respect your diamond hands. I really do. I wish I had stronger diamond hands. I just don't. That's one of the reasons why I don't own a bunch of crypto and I make news videos about them because I've read and researched too many of these stories and it just freaks me out. I'm not giving you any financial advice anyways, but I did wanna present you some facts and research that I found about the company and the token itself. With that, wraps up this episode of Ultralight. My name is Wes Sherwin. Be sure to go follow us on Instagram and TikTok at ultralight.tv. And most importantly, on Twitter at ultralight underscore TV. I'm also live streaming every week on theta.tv. It's a really amazing platform and the community on Theta is really accepting and a great community to be a part of. I highly recommend you checking it out. The link for Theta.tv is in the description. And if you've stuck around the video this long, please hit the subscribe button. It helps the channel grow and I would really appreciate it. Be safe, hold it down, and we will see you on Monday.